Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. Assalamu alaikum, guys. So, today I got a very special guest, my friend, Muhammad the Jamaican. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> bro. How's everything going, man? Everything's good. A lot takes good care of us. Yeah. So, we're in this episode. We're gonna be talking about uh, the struggles that we go through as black people um, becoming Muslim. And the reason I brought this guest on today is because. He's got some of the craziest stories, <laughs> straight up, as a, as a black man becoming Muslim, right? So uh, first, just tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, and, and where you've been, where you studied. <clears throat> okay, well, uh, born and raised downtown Toronto, and um, we moved to Scarborough earlier on. Um, went to school over there. Most of the time it was... Um, you had a choice when you got to high school, right? Like every before high school, you could be any group, any race, it didn't matter. But once you got into high school, they started to filter people into different groups. Yep. And you had a choice to make. Uh, most of the people, they would go with the black guys, and that means they would have to listen to a certain type of music, smoke a certain type of things. <laughs> sleep with a whole bunch of girls out of wedlock and mm. that was their thing mm. I wanted to make money so mm. I started hanging out with the Chinese mm. and um, by the time I was 14 I left home jumped mm. out the window because I was making enough money mm. got a place with a couple of my friends mm. and we were out there doing our thing mm -hmm. all the way until we were about um, 18 when we were 18 I didn't want to do it anymore mm. I was just tired of it like yeah, you're tired of making that wholesome money, the wholesome legal money with the Chinese folks, right? Yeah, it's not it's not just the illegal money. Like I was, I'll never be tired of money, but it's the things that we had to do for it. Yeah, that was and the things that people chase after. Mm -hmm. Like let's say you're watching a video and you see somebody with a nice luxury uh, Mercedes. Mm -hmm. So you think that's gonna bring you happiness. Mm -hmm. I was 18. I bought a Mercedes. Mm -hmm. There was something missing not happy. So you think about getting into real estate. Um, got an elder, one of our friends to sign and we got a condo. Mm -hmm. Didn't make us happy. There was always something missing. And people wanted to get into clubs so they're using fake IDs. We did these things until you're tired of it. Mm -hmm. And you get, you're just bored, you don't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And I wanted a way out, but I didn't know of a way to get out. I felt trapped. Mm -hmm. So for the first time in about four years I prayed to God and I said God uh, forgive me for the things that I'm going to do because I don't have a way out and if I had a way out I would take it mm -hmm. and um, you know it's like you're pre you're pre asking for forgiveness for sins that you're gonna do and um, one night he gave me a way out we were at war with another group and um, we got a phone call that one of the followers he was at this club and normally the way those things work, if it's a follower, you hospitalize them to send a message to the leaders. If it's one of the leaders, he's done. Mm. So it was a follower, we didn't bring any weapons, we were just going to um, hurt him. But it was a setup. And um, we jumped out of the cars, and the cars started driving, we followed them. And it ended up into a gas station parking lot. All the entrances to the parking lot got closed off by other vehicles and about 20 guys with knives, machetes, baseball bats, guns, they jumped out of the car. I had a Filipino friend, Marlon, he came out of the car. And when he came out of the car, I couldn't leave him out there to die, so I came out here and I started fighting with him. Boom, he got his hand chopped off quick and it fell on the ground. Oof. And he picked it up and he held it and he's like, I can't fight anymore. So I told him, like, uh, get in the car. And I'm out there fighting trying to get him to get back into the car mm -hmm. and I got scars all over my body like from the top of my head all the way down to my ankles mm. on the backside mm. I don't care if there's 10 people in front of me I'll find a way to get through it mm. but behind you you can't even defend yourself mm. then when I see he's safely in the car I'm about to turn and open the door and one of the leaders of the enemy gang he pulls out a gun and starts shooting the car 
Wow. And the car drove off without me. Because it was like um, a regular a student, like a student who wasn't a part of any kind of uh, mafia lifestyle or anything. Mm -hmm. He was just out with us. Mm -hmm. And he got scared when his car started getting shot up. Mm -hmm. Drove off without me. So I'm there alone. Mm -hmm. Shaitan is ever a deserter in the hour of need. Mm -hmm. I'm there alone. Mm -hmm. And you got like all these people surrounding me. And as soon as I heard those shots, I ran and hid behind the tire of a car in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And I'm listening and counting. And then uh, once I heard about almost 12, then I came out and started fighting again. I figured I'm going to hell. I'm, to, I'm going to die. Yeah. I deserve it, but I'm taking somebody with me. Mm -hmm. And I start going crazy. Mm -hmm. Got somebody's machete and start hacking. Mm -hmm. And then I get hit in the back with a baseball bat. Mm -hmm. I'm paralyzed from the waist down, mm -hmm. flat on my back, looking up at the sky. Mm -hmm. And you know when you turn it like um, on a recce channel on the TV? Yeah, yeah. And it's like... Yeah. That's how my vision was on the outside, and it was getting smaller. Oh. And I was thinking, this is what it must feel like to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, all of a sudden, I felt a long, cool finger reach into my back while my back is flat on the ground. Mm. And it tickled my spine. And my legs, they jumped up by themselves. And they started to run faster than I could control them. Ooh. And I wasn't, I was looking at my legs mm. and I'm seeing them moving and I can't feel my legs. Mm -mm. We're here, there's about 20 guys closing in to surround me. Mm. Before I even realize what's happening, I'm all the way over at that bush, like far away. Yeah, yeah. And then my legs, they stop. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm looking at my legs like, what is happening? Mm -hmm. And I can't feel anything. Mm -hmm. I feel a tingling in my big toe on my right foot. It shoots up my right leg, mm -hmm. goes across to this side, down my left leg. Mm -hmm. And then I have feeling in my legs again. And I'm like confused, like what's going on? Mm -hmm. And then I see a car with tinted windows pull up, and I'm thinking that um, it's you know an enemy coming to put me out of my misery, maybe blast me away with a shotgun. Mm -hmm. The window winds down. It's one of my Japanese friends who I bought a drink at the club for a week before. Yeah. And he's seen me out there, and he's like, get in the car. And like, my scalp was literally falling off of my uh, yeah. my skeleton, yeah, yeah. and like um, I had a bullet wound right here in the right in the yeah. right side, and um, yeah, I can see the scar. In the yeah, ground. like yeah. it's huge. And yeah. then this one, somebody tried to slice my throat, and I turned around quickly enough. Yeah, yeah. This one, they tried to cut off my hand, and like it hit the bone. Mm. Like they're all over, yeah. everywhere. It's crazy. Mm. And um, I walked into the hospital. And uh, he took, he was crying in the car because I was starting to feel sleepy. I'm like, I'm going to take a nap. He's like, no, I didn't know I was dying. Mm. But because I was getting tired, he knew I was dying. Mm. And um, he took me into the hospital and like I have the, his shirt around my head and it's covered in blood. And the doctor's like, you have to fill out this paper. You got to do this, da, 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 da. And um, I'm like, I need to see a doctor. And he's like, that's not how it works. I took it off. Everybody started panicking. Alarms mm. started going off. They put me on this bed, mm. roll me into the room, mm. and um, they start stitching me up. Mm -hmm. And I hear people all around me screaming because there's about four en people from the enemy side who are in the hospital, yeah, yeah. and they're uh, getting the work done. Mm. My friend who got his hand cut off, he's in the same hospital, wow. getting his getting his hand sewed up. Yeah. Said he had a lawnmower accident. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just laying there and they're like man you're not even saying anything you're not even like crying or isn't it painful mm -hmm. I was like I can't even think about that right now mm -hmm. and then um, they bring a police officer to the door and he's like you want to tell us what happened and I'm not answering any of his questions mm -hmm. so the doctor is torturing me that's why my scars are not straight they're jagged because he was pulling on them harder to try to put me in pain because I'm not cooperating with the police mm -hmm. and um, He's like, don't you want justice for what happened to you? And I said, uh, this is justice. And then he just left. Mm -hmm. So I just went to sleep. And when I woke up, the first thing I saw in front of me mm -hmm. was my mother and my father crying. Mm -hmm. I didn't see my mother and father in about yeah. six years. Really? Huh? Yeah. I mean, about four or five years. Yeah, because you left in your 14. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't see them in a while. Mm -hmm. And I didn't care about my life. I didn't care about anybody else's life, mm. but when something happened to me, it's them who felt the pain. Mm. And something clicked in me. Mm -hmm. I gotta stop this. Mm. And then some people from my same crew, they came and they showed me the newspaper. They shot three guys in a garage while I was sleeping. 
Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, normally I'd be happy at like that quick turnaround, mm. but I was disappointed in myself because I was like, I don't want to be the reason people are dying. Mm. And I was like, why would God save me? Mm. Of all his creation, I'm evil, I'm corrupt, I destroy his creation. Mm. I do all kinds of uh, problems in the land. Why me? Mm. I said, if I can find a religion that is true mm. and it's real, if I can find God, I will dedicate and follow it. Mm. So, I, um, when I got out of the hospital after a week, I still had to use a, like a wheelchair, but um, I had feeling in my legs. I had to go through um, rehabilitative surgeries for like um, about a year. Mm. And that was more painful than anything. Mm -hmm. Because like literally they would be opening my scalp mm -hmm. and I could feel cold metal tools grinding against my skull and stuff mm -hmm. while they're trying to do certain things over there. Mm -hmm. And um, taking skin grafts. No, I'm not asleep, they're just cutting pieces out of me and putting it in different places and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. That stuff is like torture. Yeah. Like you're thinking like Jahannam type of torture where there's points on your body you don't even realize you could feel pain. Mm. And you feel pain in a way where it's like you shut down a robot. Mm. Like it's like complete motor functions gone. Mm. And um, I started realizing that I have too much free time. So I started going back to school. Mm. And then I still found myself after school hanging out with my friends. Mm. And uh, I said, I got to get a job. So I got a night shift job. Mm. Tim Hortons, Young and Eglinton. So now I'm working, I'm going to school. And the only thing I have time for is to sleep. Mm. So while I'm there, I start studying about different religions. Because I was a Christian, I started studying Christianity. Mm. Seeing so many holes in it. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of things that just didn't make sense. And I think a lot of people know that, but they yeah. they just continue with it and try to tell you to keep going with it. Yeah, actually, I, I, I started a series uh. Uh, on my channel, Sleep Master's Doctrine, uh. like just be, breaking down how Christianity was weaponized against black people. Mm. Right. So yeah, I know I know all you're talking about, man, and it, it's it's very sad. Because, it's it's scary. It's yeah. sad. It's scary. Yeah. It's really despicable. Mm. And I don't doubt any bit of what you're saying. Mm. So then I started looking into Judaism because mm. this is one of the religions that you always hear about. Mm. And then it starts looking like they have their own personal God and you can't become Jewish mm. unless you go through some crazy process and it's like passed down generation to generation. It was like, I can't do this. Mm. I started looking into Buddhism, Hinduism, all kinds of other things. Mm. Everything, I could find books in the library, but I never found anything about Islam. Mm. And I never knew any Muslims. Mm -hmm that I knew were Muslims. Because mm -hmm. afterwards I realized you, you knew Billy a you knew was a Bilal. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, was Aisha. <laughs> <laughs> and I seen some pretty crazy stuff. But like, yeah. um, <laughs> you, I, I always thought Allah was protecting mm -hmm. them from me because I was such an evil person. Mm. But then when I became Muslim, I realized Allah protected me from them. Mm. I mean, protected uh, me from them. Because if I ever knew mm. that that These people were, Muslim. were Muslim, I would have thought that that's Islam. Yeah. And I probably would have never become Muslim. Yeah. So, just give me a second, buddy, please. Here, you can get my phone. And you can play with my keys, too. Here. So, um... I started, so then I, I wanted to find something about Islam because I heard it in rap songs and music and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I started, um, I bought a laptop. And back then it was like the late 90s when these things just came out. Mm. I bought a big bulky compact for Serio for about $14,000. Mm. And uh, stick it in the phone line and you get that dial up connection. And I started looking at Encyclopedia and Kartra, mm. studying about Islam. Mm. As I'm studying about Islam, mm. things in my life are changing. Mm. And I don't even realize that there's a relationship between them. Mm. And um, Shaitan, he came to me and, uh, twice to try to get me to leave mm. studying about Islam. Mm. It, it, the first time, he came in like the form of um, an old black guy mm. who was Now, like, were you awake or were you dreaming? I was awake. Yeah. I was in my shop working. Mm. It was like at about 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm. All right? And maybe it's like a coincidence. I don't really believe too much in coincidences. Mm. But the way it happened, mm. it was like, it was an old black guy who was like a pimp. 
mm-hmm. and he used to have all these beautiful women with him. He always had like a, a very luxurious life, and um, he always tried to come and talk to me around the same time. He would even try to send girls to kind of like uh, do things. Mm. And um, one day he said, I want to talk to you about something very important. I love you like a brother and uh, I need to tell you something. You're my younger brother and da 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 da. It's very important. Mm. Is there a time that I can talk to you alone? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Nobody's usually coming to the shop around three o'clock. You come around that time, I close the store and we can talk. Mm. So sure enough, he came at three o'clock. Mm. And I don't know if you ever had this kind of situation where you feel that something is not normal. Yeah, something's off. Yeah, yeah. it's almost like it's I've had <laughs> one of those situations. I've had one of those situations as like this person who's ta- I'm talking to right now is not a human. Yeah, it's right? not what it looks. They're like. not what it looked like. Yeah. Yes. The whole situation looks like a painted scene. Yes, it only happened to me once, but I will never forget it. Yeah, yeah. it's like time. It's like time froze. Yeah. And um, this, just give me a second, please. You can go play, you can go play. And um, it's like time froze. Mm-hmm. So this guy, he sat me down at the table and he started talking to me. And he looked me dead in the eye. Mm-hmm. And his eyes were like a grayish color. Mm-hmm. And he said, I tell you this because I love you. Be careful of those people who call themselves Muslims. Mm-hmm. They're always trying to get people to join them. Not one person in my life knew I was studying about Islam. Wow. Not one. Wow. <laughs> and it, it shook me to my core. Yeah. yeah. Where I was like, <laughs> what is happening? Yeah, what's, what like, did you just who say? Who is this? And, and whatever it was, it understood. Mm. It understood that I was apprehensive. I wasn't taking the information like wholeheartedly. Mm. I was more like, whoa, what's going on here? Mm. And then he started talking about other foolish things. And then he disappeared like he left. He like went. Mm. Never came back again. And this guy, somebody who used to visit me every, every single day. day. Yeah. And he never came back again. Mm. A couple of weeks later, he came in a different form. Mm. A rich white guy mm. who had like the most expensive everything you could think of. Driving mm. a beautiful Benz and mm. coming and talking to me about 4 o'clock every day. Mm. And um, <laughs> one time, he came to me and he asked me um, if I would like to know... Yes, I love you. You love me? Yes. You love me? Yes. You love me? Yes. You love me? Yes. You love me? Yes, only you.